everybody, welcome back to a new video. Today we are looking at a brand new product from Dr. Prepare. They just sent this out for a review. This is their 12 volt power max system. Now this is really unique because it's two products in one. You have a standalone lithium iron phosphate 100 amp hour battery. And then in the top, you have a built-in DC power hub. Now this is unique because it has a built-in charge controller and different DC output options. You have a 12 volt cigarette plug, a 5521 barrel connection, and three different USB ports. Now this is the first time I've seen a company do this. It's a very compact and convenient design. Now this has an MSRP of $469, but I have a $30 off discount code in the video description. So you can take this down to $439, which gives us a price of 34 cents a watt hour. So very affordable here. Now in the rest of the video, we'll be actually testing the standalone battery itself for its actual capacity, how much you can charge and discharge it at. We can test to see if this has low temperature charging protection because it is advertised to have that. And then we'll be actually testing the DC hub here on the top to see how much power we can get from that and how well it works. At the end of the video, we'll be doing a complete teardown of this system to see what's inside. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. Now in the first part of this video, we're gonna be talking about the specifications and the actual performance of the standalone battery. Then we'll move on to the hub. Now taking a look at the front, it has a nominal voltage of 12.8 volts. It's rated at 100 amp hours. You're supposed to get right around 1280 watt hours of capacity. You charge it up to 14.6 volts. That'll be charged to 100%. You can discharge this continuously at 100 amps. You can charge it at 50 amps and you do have the operating temperatures there. This does have low temperature charging protection. Now to test this out completely, I charged up to 100% and connected up my inverter, and I wanted to do a complete capacity test. So I have a shunt on the negative line tracking all the power going out, and I discharge this at a 0.2C rate. And by the time my inverter shut off, I was able to pull 99.9 .9 amp hours of capacity, or right around 1270 watt hours. Now I also wanted to see if I could pull 100 amps continuously so after charging up the battery, I connected up a 100 amp load right around 1280 watts and I discharged it for about 10 minutes or so and it did not have any issues. Now a little bit past 11 minutes, I turned up the load to 130 amps. You can see that the BMS actually shut off from over current protection, which is as it's designed and the BMS did shut off. Now, it was interesting, the BMS does not turn back on automatically. You will have to apply a charging voltage to the battery to turn it back on, and that worked just fine. Now to charge it back up, I connected up my Ames power converter, which can charge up to 75 amps. Now I first tried to charge the battery at 49.9 amps, and you can see it worked just fine. And as I turned up the charger above 50 amps, you can see that it shut off. So it does have a hard limit on the 50 amp charge rate. Now to test the low temperature charging protection, I put this in the freezer for two days. And when I took it out, it was completely covered in ice and frost. I tried to apply a charging voltage to the battery and it did not charge. So low temperature charging protection does work appropriately on this device. So overall, really good performance on this battery as we tested it. Now keep in mind, you can have the ability to connect up four of these together in parallel to create a five kilowatt hour system. And if you wanna power a full 2000 watt load on an inverter, you will have to have at least two of these connected together in parallel since they have to share the 175 amp load. For example, only one of these batteries can support 1280 watts. So two of them together will handle the 175 amps or 2000 watts of a 2000 watt inverter just fine. Now keep in mind, these do not support series connections. You cannot create a 24 volt or a 48 volt battery. That's because the internal BMS and the power hub do not support that higher voltage. Now, Dr. Prepare does offer another 100 amp hour battery that I've tested on the channel with low temperature charging protection and series connection support. So if you're interested in that feature, check out the video description. I'll include that review down below. Now this does have a 10 year warranty from Dr. Prepare and it does support a full 3000 charge cycles until 80% of the original capacity. So you should get a really long life out of this battery. Let's go ahead and move on and talk about the actual DC power hub. Now in the next part of the video, we're gonna talk about the actual power hub. I'm excited to show you guys how this works. Now this is designed to be specific for this battery setup and it plugs in via some Anderson power pole pairs on the bottom of this and on the top of the battery. 
Now this is only designed for lithium iron phosphate batteries. It has an input voltage on the bottom of 10 volts all the way up to 14.6 volts. So do not plug any other battery chemistries into this device. Now you can use this standalone with any other battery that's you know 12 volt lithium iron phosphate, but it is kind of designed to plug into this battery setup here. Now to turn it on, whenever it's plugged in, you can push the button on the top and then it turns on a blue light to let you know that everything is powered up. Now let's go ahead and talk about the output options for the hub. Now taking a closer look under the dust cover, you have two USB-A ports that support quick charge. You have a USB-C port that supports 30 watts output and you have two 12 volt connections, a 5521 connection and a 12 volt cigarette plug. Now both the 12 volt connections are limited to 10 amps. Now I tested that with my battery load tester. I was able to get right around 120 watts before it would shut off from pulling too much power. So plan on 120 watts output max from both of these. Now the voltage is direct pass through from the battery. So after a while, the voltage will drop on this battery, but for the most of the duration, it's gonna sit right around 13.2 volts. So you don't really need regulation on these. Now, because this does not have active cooling, there is a sticker on the top that warns you if you pull seven to 10 amps for longer than one hour, it will auto shut off the output here. Now I did test that with my battery low tester. I pulled eight and a half amps and at an hour it shut off exactly. Now I did also test pulling 6.5 amps and it was able to run for almost two and a half hours without a problem. So it does seem like the cutoff is right at seven amps. Now I wanted to test a 12 volt compressor fridge with this and a 12 volt compressor fridge is gonna pull around five amps or less depending on the compressor model and I did not have an issue running that. I, in fact, I ran it for 82 hours off a fully charged battery, and when I came back after 82 hours, it was still sitting at 50% state of charge. So you can get a very long run time, and connecting up your 12-volt compressor fridge to these isn't an issue at all. Now, I also tested the USB ports. For example, I charged the power station at 30 watts using the USB-C power delivery port, but whenever I connected up another USB device, it kind of shares that 30 watts. It dropped down to 12 watts output, and the cell phone was fast charging. Now I also tested pulling 10 amps from the output here and having USB uh, devices plugged in and it works all at the same time. Now the benefit to this is it's completely silent. There's no fans or anything whenever it's uh, charging or discharging, but it is limited to 10 amps and under seven amps for a continuous output. So you get the benefit of complete silent operation, but you just wanna make sure that you don't pull a ton of power through that or it'll shut off at an hour. Let's go ahead and talk about the charging input for the hub. Now the charging input port on the front is an Anderson power pole input. It supports 11 volts all the way up to 25 volts and has a limit of 4.2 amps. Technically, the maximum input that you can plug into this is a 100 watt solar panel, and we'll be testing that here. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with Anderson PowerPole, they are fairly simple to crimp and create your own cables. I have a whole video on that, and I'll include that in the video description if you guys are interested, but this does not come with any you know, charging cables. You will have to make your own cables if you want. You can purchase some off Amazon as well. Now, I wanted to test a couple different charging inputs. The first one was a test to see what would happen if you plugged it into your vehicle while you wanted to charge on a road trip or while you were camping and you were driving between destinations, how much would this charge off a 12 volt battery? So I hooked up my 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery and with an inline watt meter, I was seeing right around 53 watts. Now, because this is removable, I can actually move the watt meter to see how efficient it is after the charge controller. And I was seeing right around 51 watts, so still very efficient at the 12 volt level. Now, I also wanted to plug in a solar panel. Remember, this has a max cutoff of 25 volts. So you have to make sure that your voltage of your solar panel, the voltage open circuit does not go over 25 volts. For example, I did test with a solar panel that had a slightly higher voltage and it did not charge this because it went over 25 volts. It was putting out 25.4 volts and it would not charge. So I decided to use my Blue Rise 120 solar panel. It's an excellent budget solar panel. And when I plugged that into this, I was able to get right around 92 watts charging input. So pretty decent from a solar panel. Now I wanted to see how efficient the charge controller was at this level, so I moved my watt meter behind the charge controller and I was seeing right around 81 to 82 watts maximum. So we're getting around 89% efficiency charging rate when you're using a solar panel on this. So you have basically two charging options. You can plug it into a 12 volt battery, charge around 50 watts or so, 
or if you use a 100 watt solar panel, you're gonna charge anywhere from 100 watts down based on the actual conditions and the voltage input. So the charge controller on this is not a very fast charge controller. Of course, you can still charge the battery from the main positive and negative terminals, but the convenience of having a small charge controller built in is pretty awesome. Now, before jumping into the actual teardown part of this video, I want to show you guys the difference kind of in size between these two. For example, this is Dr. Prepare's other 100 amp hour battery, and you can see it's almost the same exact height, and I really like how these are recessed down so the terminals are not exposed. In fact, it shows you that you can actually stack uh, two of these high and create some sort of parallel system. So the weight and size of these batteries is basically identical. This one's just a little bit heavier. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and do a teardown on this. But overall, my thoughts and opinions on this so far, well, we were able to pull the rated capacity. We were able to pull um, the advertised maximum output of 100 amps. It was able to charge it 50 amps. So it's definitely working as advertised and it did have low temperature charging protection. So, so far, this battery at $439 plus the hub, guys, that hub is included in that price. That is a crazy deal. Some batteries that you purchase on Amazon, like the Chins battery and uh, the Ampere Time battery are slightly less than that, and they don't even have this hub built in, and they do not have low temperature charging protection. So, the actual, uh, quality and features of Dr. Repair are excellent. Now we're really gonna find out what it's like on the inside as we do a teardown to see what the quality is on this. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we tear it down. Okay, so I advise you guys not to tear down the battery. Uh, probably avoids the warranty somehow or uh, you risk damaging this permanently. It's not designed to be taken apart, but we're gonna do this so we can see the inside and the build quality. First step that we wanna do is take off the hub. You pull up on this and then that uh, Basically reveals some access screws here. We're gonna take off the actual bolts too. Now these are M8 style bolts, comes with a couple matching washers here. Uh, the other thing I noticed is probably have to take off these straps. Looks like you pull these through and then these can come off. Uh, let's go ahead and fly through. This is not gonna be a guide. I'm just gonna show you guys the whole process. Uh, probably fast forward a bunch. Let's get tearing this down. Okay guys, we got it open. That actually wasn't that difficult. Now, first impressions here, we have the 100 amp BMS here. It says it's the GP100-2-V1.3, manufacture date of 2022. Look at this massive heat sink on the top. That'll help keep it cool. Now, the other thing I noticed is it's spot welded directly to the cells here, and these are actually cylindrical cells. You can see that they are small cylindrical cells. That means there's a bunch of them in parallel and in series, so this does not use, uh, you know, the big square prismatic cells. So pretty cool there. That's kind of like my battery hookup DIY battery that I built. Um, looking at the actual main lugs here, you have three 10 aug wires that come off, and same with this side, we have three 10 aug wires. Um, they used a massive terminal bolt and nut system to attach these wires. It does look like they are heat shrinked and crimped on there, so that's good. And this is glued together. Uh, don't see any issues there. Now, it looks like the Anderson power pole port connects up to these 16 gauge wires. And there also appears to be some sort of communication port. Maybe that's to update the firmware or something on this. Um, so yeah, there are some additional ports that are accessible from the other side that goes to the uh, to the actual BMS. We also have this uh, status state of charge uh, light ribbon here that goes to the BMS. And uh, it does look like it has um, some actual temperature sensors and they are attached to the cells themselves. So there's our low temperature charging protection there. Now I'm taking a closer look at the actual cells. I wanna show you guys, these are cylindrical cells and it has this ribbon cable. Each one is spot welded together, so pretty good there. Um, this is the main, one of the main positive is also attached to that ribbon cable. 
Now, if you notice, the BMS is actually on standoffs. It is not touching the cells themselves, so that's good. Uh, there's no like heat transfer between the warm BMS and the cells. So yeah, overall, I don't see any issues with the build quality of this battery. Everything seems to be put together really nicely. Now here's a closer look at the communication port that I was talking about. Now it did have this uh, small, uh, basically block in place, that rubber block, and then it had that sitting on top. So um, this is where the hub plugs in, and then this is where that uh, appears to be a communication port. Okay, so I flipped the battery upside down, so now you guys can see there's actually these two recessed areas, and it comes with these two mounting plates that screw in here. So if you're going to plan to mount this in your truck, camper, RV, or whatever, you can actually hard mount this with the included plate. So pretty cool design by Dr. Prepare. Okay guys, I'm back after the teardown, and look at this. You can see I basically got it back to normal. I just left the straps off but I was very impressed with the build quality of this battery pack and also how easy it was to disassemble. I'm hoping Dr. Prepare comes out with a larger model, maybe a 200 amp hour model that supports uh, full 200 amps, um, at least something in this form factor with this type of design. I'm not sure if it'll have the hub or not, but I'd love to see that. Anyway, guys, if you really like this video, please give me a thumbs up. It always lets me know if I'm going the right direction with the videos. And hopefully you enjoyed all the testing I did and the teardown. Um, a lot of times you don't get to see inside these batteries to see if they're high quality or not. So now we know I'm definitely going to recommend this battery to anybody that's looking for, um, you know, a 100 amp hour battery that is high quality and comes in at a good price. Guys, I have the discount code down in the video description. Make sure you check that out to save $30 on this purchase. Thanks for watching. Hopefully we'll see you guys in the next video.